Sheridan Tung and I'm a composer and I write the music for television dramas and documentaries. Some of the shows I've written the music for are Silent Witness, DCI Banks, Wonders of the Solar System, Wonders of the Universe. And um, over the past year I've been working on my own album under the name Innis. And the album's called Seven Days. And today I'm going to be tr talking about the title track Seven Days. So we're in my Studio 2, which is actually my mix room. Next door is my writing room, Studio 1, but I, mo I mix most of my tracks in here or I bring in an engineer uh, to mix my tracks like Jake Jackson from Air Studios. Um, and I also do some recordings in here. I have a uh, piano, an upright piano, and I have a lot of uh, analog keyboards and synths and things like that. And sometimes I record guitar in here, but my, my writing and composition is actually done in the other studio. Um, so the setup, what you'll probably notice first thing, is there are three speakers. So I'm set up for Dolby um, Surround Sound 5.1. So I can deliver uh, music soundtracks in 5.1. And I have done that. So for example, Into the Universe with Stephen Hawking, uh, they wanted the music in 5.1. So I recorded uh, the orchestra in Budapest um, in a hall in 5.1. So we ended up with mics at the back of the hall. So whenever Jake came in to mix uh, the, the soundtrack here in the studio, he was able to place the rear room mics uh, in, into the rear two little atoms at the back of the hall. So consequently, when my whole music, the soundtrack was mixed and it was played to the producers down at the dub, um, they were just blown away by the quality of the sound uh, and the orchestra and the, the samples and everything um, because I put a lot of time into um, getting really good um, you know, mix set up in 5.1. So the other thing you probably notice is I've got three screens. Um, the one on the left is set up with a Mac Mini, and that runs Pro Tools. So most of the time when I'm writing to picture, I actually run um, Pro Tools running the picture, which uh, feeds it out to this large screen. So I'm looking at the film, the movie, up on the screen, and Pro Tools is syncing to Logic. Um, so the picture's always chasing. I like to keep Logic audio just for the audio, just for the co composing side, and I don't want it to deal, have to deal with picture. The other advantage is uh, the audio outs from the, the sync sound from the film can come up this little analog desk I've got here. And again, very separate from the audio, so I'm never getting uh, sync sound through my, through my logic setup. I like to keep the music very much on its own. Then in the center, we've got the main, uh, my main logic screen, which screen shares on the right as well. So I'm working on logic audio on two screens, which is lovely because I can then see score on the right or I can see my mix setup. The other big difference, the other uh, feature I've got is um, the PC. I've got uh, PC slaves, which I can access on these screens as well. So I can screen share onto the PC and the PC is set up in, in the machine room. Uh, the track uh, Seven Days came about from working on Wonders of the Universe and Wonders of the Solar System with Brian Cox. I wanted to do a track that um, a lot of people know my music from those shows and I wanted to do a track for them that could maybe bring them into the album and they'd go, oh, that's, that's Sheridan Tongue and uh, yeah, that's, that's, I recognise that, that music. So uh, the first track on the album is, is kind of loosely in the Wonder style and I remember rec uh, when I played it to uh, Jake Jackson at Air Studios when I recorded the string, strings, the first thing he said was like, oh yeah, uh, Wonders of the Universe. He immediately recognised it, so um, that's why the, the track is as it is. So the first thing you probably notice with my setup is it's actually using Logic 9 as opposed to the latest version of Logic. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, my templates are incredibly complex. I run a PC slave for all my uh, sample libraries. And the PC is located in, in a machine room next door, because so, it's a pretty noisy machine. But um, it means then it's freeing up all the processing power uh, on the, main, on the ma master Mac Pro. So I can, have a huge, I can run a huge library when I'm writing um, of all my own sounds. Um, but at the same time, then not kind of slow down this computer. So, and because I do a lot of uh, TV work, um, writing music for documentaries and television dramas, one of the things is got to be a very quick turnaround. It's got to be to a very high level. And there's a real advantage in having uh, templates set up of all my sounds, um, which I can just like like a go-to sound. So when I start a new project, the first thing I will do is build up a template. And the templates, like for example, I think for this, for this, for this album project, um, pr I probably have about 450 
logic tracks of uh, instruments. And the majority of these instruments are samples and sample libraries that um, I've created over the years. I've had them commissioned from people, uh, engineers and programmers that have worked for me, uh, they've created some. And, you know, from musicians, mainly from live sound sources. So I've got a real bespoke library that's quite individual um, that you won't hear on other people's tracks. So, and I use them a lot in my music on TV shows, and I've used them a lot in, um, in, this, in this project as well. So that, this is Logic 9. So let's get down to what, um, how it all appears on the screen. So I like to have my audio at the top of a project every time to make it very clear. Keep, it always keeps it you know, very uniform and neat. So my, these are my, what we're looking at now are the um, strings, string recordings. So these strings were recorded at Air Studios, uh, engineered by Jake Jackson. And we did a number of takes. In fact, the strings were actually recorded direct into Pro Tools. So this is the Pro Tools session running alongside. And Pro Tools is running on a Mac Mini, which is synced up with um, the Mac Pro. So we're not hearing the strings from Pro Tools at the minute, but these are the original string takes, which were edited in Pro Tools, and then uh, kind of comped down to a master version in Logic. So that's why we can see uh, a number of strings here. At the top, uh, there's some Celeste. I recorded some live Celeste at Air Studios as well. And um, in fact, we can hear that. Let's just hear the uh, live Celeste. And you can hear it's got, actually got a squeaky pedal, which we only noticed midway through the session. So one of the assistants went out and got a can of WD-40. And we never really got rid of the squeak, but you don't actually hear it in the track. So we, in the end, we, just, we didn't worry too much about it. So that sound at the end was something actually I just discovered, just kind of came across when mixing. And it seemed to work, um, if you look at the automation on this, um, you can suddenly see the automation, the level pushes up. And kind of discovered that in, in the whole track itself, this ambience of, of just basically Air, Air Studio One, um, just been pushed up really actually turned out to be quite a cool sound so when I when we hear it in the track you'll hear it kind of just gives this ambience at this particular moment and I think that's the beauty of running a system like this just kind of stumbling across things and so that's what kind of why it stayed in. So the Celeste was recorded with, um, we've got a tree, a deck of tree, which are three omnis in, uh, in, in the room at, at air. These are them here, these three. And then we've got uh, a couple of wide room mics, just to c capture the ambience of the room. And then these are two close mics, uh, just you know, really close mics on the Celeste itself. So there's only a little bit of processing on the tree where, uh, just using the Logic EQ, taking out a lot of the bottom end and a little bit of the top. So it's just really keeping the mid-range. On the wides, uh, there's no processing. And you know, it's a very, very, I kind of wanted a very natural sound for when I'm recording real instruments. I don't like to do too much processing to them on the whole. So uh, I'm going for quite an organic, a real sound. So. I was keen to keep it very natural. There's just a little bit of hall reverb and there's a little bit of, uh, well, two types of halls, basically, which is giving, which is giving the reverb sound. So um, I've got two sends, two reverb sends on the Celeste. One of them is being sent to an altiverb, uh, which is this hall here, mechanics hall. And the other one is being sent to, uh, let's just find it, uh, this one here, another altiverb. St. Joseph, yeah, a, lar a church, so a far larger space. Uh, Altverb, one of my favourite reverbs. Um, just love the sound, love the fact that uh, there are so many different options for it as well. 
some you know it's just small spaces does small spaces really well it does large spaces so it's uh, really that's probably my go-to reverb uh, so now let's talk about the strings so the string parts um, originated from ideas that I had on samples which I mocked up in samples sent them to my arranger and my arranger um, scored them out for orchestra 17 piece orchestra string section and um, this is the string part. So again, they're recorded in, at Air Studios, and we have a tree, uh, a deck of tree over them. We have the wide uh, mics to capture the, the room sound, and then we have close, uh, I think it was one mic per desk, so one mic per um, pair of um, musicians, uh, essentially. And this is what they sound like on their own. So for the strings, I wanted a kind of um, an ostinato, a repeating figure that would just kind of give me this um, rhythmic um, feeling throughout the track. And the, um, my arranger came up with the idea of using string harmonics, so that's why it's a very delicate sound and you can hear very wispy strings. That's kind of an unusual sound, especially for them to be playing such a rhythmic part. But I found in the mix uh, when I was working on the track, it didn't work that loud and it didn't work that dry, so I ended up adding quite a lot of reverb to it and just setting it back in the mix so it was more, it's more of an effect that you're not so aware of. But I still liked it. I wanted to use it, but I just didn't want it that loud. So um, we've got a number of reverbs on this. This one's maybe slightly more processed than I would have normally gone for. Um, so we've got, again, we've got that, we've got that altiverb, we've got an altiverb setting, a hall setting. We've got another altiverb setting, which is the church. And then on, on the strings as well, there's a very small, bright plate. Um, and then finally, I've got a delay set up. Here's, so here's the delay on the strings. Uh, basically, it's just a Logic plugin. And in terms of EQ, so on the strings, I have a little bit of EQ, a Neve 1081. Just adding, mainly adding just a little bit of 10k, um, a little bit of low mid, um, that's about it. I mean, the beauty of recording in a studio like Air is the sound of the strings in the room just sounds beautiful. So you're really just capturing, trying to capture that as close as possible with, you know, really good mics. And Jake Jackson did a fantastic job for me on this. So not a lot of processing on, on the strings in this, apart from reverbs, just to set it back. Um, let's go to a little bit where they're playing some chords, just to, so you can hear the actual uh, sound of the string chords. So here we go. So what I'll do now is I'll now play you uh, the individual mics uh, so you can hear what the tree sounds like, for example. So this is the sound of the tree uh, mics, which are three mics placed at the front of the, s of the string section, uh, and they're omnis. And if you like, they're capturing, for me, the truest sound of the string section. If you were the conductor, this is um, quite close to the sound you would be hearing at this point.
And then this is the sound of the wider room mics. And you can immediately hear it's it's a roomier sound. It's Air Air Studio One. It's not the Air Hall, um, so it's it's a great room for recording a smaller group of strings because you can get the intimacy and um, just a lovely a lovely string sound in this size room. And because there's not so much reflections and reverberation, way more control in the mix. It's, you know at this stage, um, which is great. So I'm not stuck with uh, quite a reverberant string sound, which would have been problematic for the, the, the faster ostinato figures. Um, and then this is, for example, let me play you one of the string mics. This is a uh, violin, the first, I think this is the first desk of violins. So a really close mic, uh, mic sound, which means, uh, and again, you can probably hear that there's a lot of separation between the, actually a surprising amount of separation. You're not hearing the other, you know, the cello and the um, viola in this one. So here, for example, is a cello, just the cl close mic on one of the cellos. The other advantage of having individual uh, desks and instruments mic'd up in a string section like this is if there's a note in a chord that I just want uh, to be brought out a little bit more, then this gives me the chance to do that in the mix. I can just push up at certain points with automation, certain notes. So if we then go back, we can hear, let's hear, in fact, let's hear all the close mics together. So these are all the close mics of the string section. So now let's put in all the mics now for the string section. Uh, and this is still without reverb, so we're just hearing the natural sound in the room, but now you'll hear it slightly, slightly set back because we have the room mics and the tree mics as well. That's all we have time for for now. If you want to see the rest of the video,